excited to be here. I'm passionate about a few things. BYU is obviously one of them. I wish we would have had a victory, but that's okay. Um, I'm also passionate about entrepreneurship. And it's so great to be here at uh, BYU. And if you look at some of the great entrepreneurs, think about Nephi. Would you for a second? How about Nephi? Okay, it takes, Lehi takes his whole family out of the wilderness, right? They, I mean, eight years. They end up at the uh, land of Bountiful. And then what happens? Hey, you got to build a ship. I don't think he's ever built a ship before. So what did they do? Went to the Lord, prayed, right? Figured out, I need some tools. Well, where should I go to get tools? Ask the right questions. But what did he do? Did he sit around and say, you know what? I've never built a boat before. So, uh hang out for a little bit. No, he went to work, right? So that's, I hopefully what I'm going to share with you today will be meaningful. Um, and you'll walk away with a couple things to say, okay, uh, that was worth my time because most importantly I want to uh, present something that you guys can leave and say, awesome, let's go make something happen. So here's the evolution of soda. I'm going to walk you through how it started, how it began, some of the mistakes we made, some of the things that we did right. I think uh, we need a lot more time to go through all the details, but we'll give you some high level and then leave some time for questions at the end. This was actually our first logo <laughs> that I designed. That's yeah, kind of sad. So we saw it progress, get a little bit better. Now it's our logo today. Um, but you'll see as we go through here, having a different name, especially in a marketing company, especially in an SEO company where there's so much SEO going on. I remember when we first started, we went and took a camera around and asked a lot of people, what is SEO? They're like, Southeast Organization. <laughs> now a lot of people know what search engine optimization is. So again, we wanted a different name. Let's see, I'm just going to drag right here. And go. So again, thrilled to be here, and I think this is the best way for me to articulate that. <laughs> and four plus one, right? But I'll also give you extra credit if you follow me on Twitter, too. That's pretty cool. That's, that's a good way to get followers. Extra credit, two points. I'm not sure what extra credit that will be, but anyway. <laughs> so we'll start here. If you, if you have smartphones, I'll leave it up for you for a minute. We're going to start here, go all the way, end. This is our agenda. We'll talk about the recipe. Some of the things that we found worked early on, some of the things that didn't. I remember when I made cookies the first time, well, probably the first time ever, at sea level. Yeah, they worked very good. So we added this ingredient, so we're like, we must have been missing something, so we doubled a few things. We doubled the recipe, it was just double gross. Right? So we're going to talk about the importance of a good recipe, talk a little bit about the orange soda story, and then how we've been able to define, refine, iterate, and just continue to move forward, and then a few tips at the end. So the right recipe from the beginning, I'm going to say this, just narrow it down to three things. Everyone loves a good story. Make sure that when you start, who wants to start a company in here, first of all? Okay, you guys are crazy. <laughs> so, when you start, when you start a company, think about this. What's your story? What are you going to tell? So, story and understand your vision from the very beginning. Your customer, know your target, know who your customer is, know what's most important to them. Really understand them. What's the differentiator? What's the problem you're trying to solve? And the last one is, can you demonstrate it? Prove it to us that you can, you can do that. So in the beginning, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about uh, the story and how Orange Soda came about. So wouldn't it be cool if you had a picture of the internet? So I found a picture of the internet on the internet. So all these big bright lights are obviously a popular site. That's really how it works. I'll get into it a little bit, but mostly want to walk you through the process. And not so much about products and services. So three of us got together, Chris Bacon, JB, and myself, back in uh, 2006. So Jay said, hey, you like the name Orange Soda, Orange Soda Media? Hey, I just bought this one. So this was earlier in the year, this a little later. Hey, I just bought OrangeSoda.com. It cost me a bit, so we should probably do something with it. <laughs> so I, I sent back an email. Hey, I think we're going to meet on Monday. You guys named the place. Heard the one-man band's awesome. Either way, I'm good. I said, one-man band is okay, but if there's jelly donuts, then I'm in. 
my machine rebooted and I lost the docs I was going to send. I can scan them in and send them over tomorrow. It was good seeing you today. Have a great fourth. Then Chris sent back, Jay, I just want to make sure you're going to take this seriously. We can't have you rebooting your machine every time you want to move forward. I'm just a little nervous about your commitment level <laughs> with a little smiley face. So this was one of the emails where we decided to take it, go and take it to the next level. We said we're going to meet in the morning at Jay's house. Jay said, I'm in. This will be a fun venture. So here's a little bit of the story. Here's our first office. It's actually right in the mouth of Provo Canyon. And uh, I remember it was really just the three of us. The bikes, I'll tell you that, remind me uh, to tell you about our bikes. We still have bikes around our office. We cruise around. It's a lot of fun. The beach cruisers, we wanted a different giveaway at trade shows. And so we chose beach cruisers. It was a little difficult to ship after someone went it because, you know, with an iPod or something like that or a phone, you just give it to them, hey, you know, you're on your way. I remember we gave away a bike one time at a trade show back in New York, and it was raining. And we're like, oh no. The guy, well, at least he's in New York. We had one of our employees pedal it all the way to his house by Central Park. He was soaking wet. But that was the price for a great giveaway. So this is our first office. Here was our first server rack. Pretty awesome, right? Costco table, just plugging the wires, trying to figure everything out. We got to the point in this one office where if you had to get up and go to the restroom, you're like, hey, excuse me, can, you know, can I slide by? The other problem was we had a lot of people visiting our office, and the bathroom was right by the entryway because it was kind of small. That was a little awkward at times. <laughs> so we moved in May of 2007 to a little bigger office over to the Canyon Park in Orem, and it was great because we had all kinds of space to ride the bikes around and continue to grow the business. So here's, we had a nicer lobby that was not close to the restrooms. And then that's our server rack. Again, just grew bigger with a lot more cables and a lot more plugins. Here's our current office. This is something that's a lot of fun. Every Wednesday we have muffins that are delivered, catered. So we have Muffin Wednesday. It doesn't matter what project you're working on. When that email goes out that the muffins are there, people go charge into the front. <laughs> This one, this is another, this is one uh, a trade show we were at. I think this may have been, because that's the guy that rode the bike. This was the bike that we gave away. And that sign right there says, warning, this bike is almost as cool as the internet. <laughs> Looking a little bit better, right? So we just celebrated our fifth birthday at Ward So We started five years ago. And we had a fun little celebration. Notice the candles. They're bottles. <laughs> That's the other thing we notice when you when you start a company and around a name, build something and start something that you can have a lot of fun with and build a brand around. All right, I'm going to play this video for you. A little bit about our culture. We celebrate. Yeah! This is one more small business advertiser that we get to help. Yeah! Great company, OK Software. We love it. We're fully invested on their best. See that little BYU there? It's really a fun company. We're showing a baby. Provides great internet marketing solutions for small to mid-sized businesses. We are niche in our market, and we're going to be here for a long time. We are, gosh, different. I love working at Orange Soda. Oh, Orange Soda! All my marketing with fish! So that was at our second office. And that was fun. That was fun to, to start there. So what keeps Orange Soda busy? Really the people and the culture, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. I really want to do a deep dive into what we decided early on we wanted to be and what we didn't want to be. Talking about our customers and our product, our vision and our values. Uh, in our very first office, I remember having, I've been involved in the online marketing space since about 99, 2000, and built some deep relationships. And when I started, when we started this, I started reaching out to some of the contacts that I had in the industry. Uh, we said, hey, we'd love to help you guys out any way that we could. All of a sudden, we get an RFP for a really large company, and it's me and Chris, and we just hired our first employee. <laughs> and they said, hey, we'd love to have you come out and meet us. So we bought plane tickets, flew out there, and said, hey, here's what we're going to do. We had some industry expertise, which is another thing, another pointer that I'd point out. Understand the marketplace which you're going into and get some experience. So we had all these deep relationships. They said they were an RFP. I spent the Christmas holiday working on it in 2006. We flew back out to present, me and, uh, and, and Chris, and came back and were like, what are we going to do? This is awesome. But how are we going to 
how are we going to deliver on everything? So we started putting together an entire plan, which is we got customers involved from the very beginning, get their feedback. And we want we put together a plan that was and articulated around what their needs were, most importantly. So get out to your customers and understand what their needs are first and foremost. So understanding customers and product, vision and values. We spend a lot of time together. Obviously, you spend more time at work or more time at school than you do with your family a lot of times, especially in startup mode. So those are those are what I, kind of what keeps it busy. So let me share. We have what is called a six pack. It's our six pack of values. Of course, everything you'll see. Our technology platform. It's called CO2. We have used Fizz and now Valencia as it's kind of evolved. Right, all playing around the orange. We have a lot of fun with that. But culture, gone are the days when people stay because they love their organizations. Today, great people stay because they love the people they work for. Chester Elton, who wrote the 24 Karat Manager. Yeah, I love what you do. So I'm going to walk you through a few of these. And we also spend time playing ping pong, having fun, building relationships together. And we also remember the very end, uh, Superman, action figures, posters, Halloween, Lava lamps and egg cookers. I'll tell you what, one of our employees bought an egg cooker. It was part of this toaster program, like this all in one program. <laughs> Let me tell you what, when hits start cooking the eggs, you think popcorn smells bad when it burns? Let me tell you what, don't leave the eggs in the toaster. That was a little side thing. Uh, refreshing service. I'm going to spend a lot of time here talking about service and how you take care of customers, especially within this new social media context. How treating customers and taking care of customers is now more important than ever. Because that's, well, I'm going to jump into that right now. How many of you guys seen Back to the Future? Awesome. One of the best shows ever. November 5th is coming up, right? Let's celebrate time travel on November 5th, even though it does fall on a Saturday. Remember when George walks into the diner on the corner. He's getting all brave and he says, Lou, give me a chocolate. You give me a milk, chocolate, right? Slides it down. Remember that relationship that they have one-on-one? -on -one? You walked in and people knew who you were, knew your face, knew your preferences, knew what you liked. Guess what? I think that's coming with social because it's out there. And as you create those relationships, people really like to do business with people that they know. So refreshing service, customized service, and that's what the Fizz is all about. The internet is awesome. Well, it is awesome. To think about how much it's changed, even since, why, when I was a kid and I was here at BYU, I had, we're talking about fax machines and stuff like that. <laughs> but think about how fast it's, it's, uh, it's growing. We tweet, we stumble, we Facebook, we do all those things, and the internet continues, continually changes and evolves. That's one of our values. I'll dig into that a little bit more. Soda's thicker than water. One of the things that we really believe in at Orange Soda in our orange soda family is we put the sacred cow out of pasture. We like to catch people doing things right and celebrate those victories rather than looking for all the things that are not going right. But we don't settle. We, we want to create value. We want to make sure to take care of our customers. Own it. We want to own it. Nothing better when you walk into somewhere and they say, you know what, I've got it. I got, all, I got the answers for you. I'm going to take care of you. Oh, it's along the same thing as being the expert. Having the passion about uh, the majority of our, our personal employees have websites. They're passionate about what they do. So the internet is awesome. Love this quote by Bill Gates. The internet is becoming the town square for the global village of tomorrow. Again, going back to that back to the future. You notice I'm a little bit all over the place because that's kind of how entrepreneurs are, right? There's ideas and we've got all these things going on in our brain. We actually celebrated the TechCrunch's fifth birthday. This was uh, a year ago. We had the Orange Man show up, dance on top of the roof. That was a lot of fun. Being the expert. So we go back right here. The internet is awesome. You can see some of these sites continue. New sites are being added all the time to provide value for customers. One of the things that we do within Orange Soda also is what's called Orange Soda University. Because once you're through learning, you're through. Always got to be learning, especially in a fast-paced technology environment. 
being on top of the game. But we have all these experts <laughs> in different departments within Orange Soda, and we're like, why can't we leverage the skills and the knowledge that they have and bring it all in together? So we have courses during lunch where our finance guys stand up, and they're giving away things, so it keeps a little more excited, right? We're talking about finance. Uh, social media, PPC, SEO, Google Places, Illustrator, phone skills, design. So we go through all of these uh, examples to keep our employees as the experts. And again, over 50% of Orange Soda employees own and manage a website. Refreshing service. This is what refreshing service is all about. I'm going to dive into this a little bit deeper as we talk about taking care of customers. We found out unsolicited that one of our customers was not feeling very well. So again, customer service sales rep took time, drew this card, and sent it off. We didn't ask her to do that. But it's little things like that, you guys, that make a big difference in making sure that the customer really cares, that they know that you really care. I have to say, one of my favorite companies is Zappos. Mommy, I'm a shoe fanatic as well. I really like shoes. It's sad. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the few males that has more shoes than his wife. <laughs> she reminds me of that often as well. <laughs> um, but having gone down to Zappos, they uh, has anyone ever been down there and taken a tour of their office? Lauren, you have? Congratulations. Was Lauren collecting money at the very beginning? You swiping the cards? <laughs> so I wish she didn't charge you too much to be in here. No, but Zappos, what an incredible experience. On the customer experience side, it is fanatical. This was an article that received a ton of uh, press. When someone called in, ordered a pair of shoes, they didn't work. So this person called back, talked to this customer service rep, and said, hey, I need to return these shoes. Obviously, the next question was, well, is there anything wrong with them? No, we just need to return them and ask a few more questions. And to find out the person that the shoes have been purchased for had passed away. And this customer service rep, without even thinking twice, sent flowers to that customer. Did they have to do it with the flowers customer at 50, 60 bucks? Now you've got a customer for life. That's awesome. That's when we talk about refreshing service. You know, also, who, has anyone read Raving Fans? You hear the book Raving Fans? That's a recommended read. If you think about what our expectation is when we walk into just about any restaurant or any sort of business, our expectation is here. And usually we walk in and we're down here. If they can just bring me back up and please me just a little bit, man, I'll come back forever. But if they go above and beyond, what we like to do as human beings, we like to share. We like to talk about things and say, how was your experience there? Oh, I loved it. Quick experience here locally. The name will remain nameless. Uh, my my father-in-law went into a place to eat and ordered, went and sat down, got a little number, and when they brought the food out, the person just kind of set the tray down and said, you know, anything else? He's like, yeah, is there some, you know, he asked for like barbecue sauce or something really simple. And they're like, yeah, it's right over there. And turned and walked away. It's something really small, right? But don't even ask. Don't even ask if you're not going to say, how else can we help you genuinely? The interesting thing was the manager was right there and came over and said, so sorry about that, can we take care of it? Isn't it interesting, too, you can see when people like what they do just when they're walking into either their office or when you're on the phone with them? You can't see them, right? But you can tell what kind of day they're having, what kind of experience they're having there. Okay, that's refreshing service. Soda is thicker than water. This was our last year's Halloween event. We actually have some pictures posted on, on uh, from this lab. We actually celebrated on Friday. And so pictures are on Facebook. You guys, like, you'll see that. From Delivering Happiness, from Tony Shea, uh, from Zappos. I realized there was something unique about Zappos when I looked around and saw that all of my friends happened to be my coworkers, too. We love who we work with. And one of the things that's different is we have all these companies come from outside of Utah and come in uh, to Orange Soda and they say, something's different here. And again, it's because of the culture that we've built around high performance, high trust, and, and results. But a lot of us, this is this core group right here, uh, we ran the Red Rock, which I'm not sure, it sounds like so much. Well, that's a whole other analogy of starting a business, right? Like running a, a relay. Has anyone ever run a relay, Red, Ragnar, Red Rock, things like that? Think, oh, this is great. We'll go run from 
middle of nowhere to Zion, and we'll take turns running, and we'll run through the night, not sleep, for something around our neck, right? It's, it's very similar to starting a business. You think, you know what, I'm going to go and start, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to accomplish. All of a sudden you start running. You got to make sure you're running in the right direction, you've got the right group around you, you've got the support, and you've got the team to succeed. We have so much fun together. We run, we run things like this, again, looking around and seeing that we're all friends. All right, I've got one more video for you here. This encapsulates, as I mentioned, remembering the ping pong. Oh, that's going really fast. someone's cubicle in aluminum foil. It was crazy. Man, I wanted to be on me. Welcome to the party. So awesome! <laughs> I was so excited. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> I feel bad to be here. I'm gonna work early. The designer of the project, this is Ralph Kirby. What? No, it's not for Yes, he designed that tile. The model. The mirror. The name tag. Actually, that was something like Ralph Kirby's idea. <laughs> mm, so delicious. <laughs> they did it after hours, <clears throat> but that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> and again, it encapsulates part of the fun culture and loving who you work with, enjoying what you do, and having a passion for it. Own it. Really like this quote by Tony Shea again. If you don't trust your employees to tweet freely, it's an employee. It's, it's an employee or leadership issue, not an employee Twitter policy issue. Trust that is, that is created and built within a company is essential. Trust is so important in what you're doing, especially as you start to talk about ideas and who are we going to bring in, and do they have, not only do they have the right expertise, do they have relationships, but do we trust them? Trust is critical. When you walk into someone and they know exactly what you're talking about, you can ask them about, well, you know, I tend to pronate a little bit. Well, this is the perfect shoot for pronating. And we recommend this, 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 and this. Versus, uh, let me go ask my manager real quick, right? Your experience already from the get-go is different. And that's what you need to create as you start thinking. You're like apples, right? Think different. And as, in terms of owning it, I just thought about a quote from Meg, Meg Whitman, who's now the CEO of uh, HP. She said, entrepreneurs and innovators get a kick out of screwing up the status quo. That's exactly what it is. So we take a step back on owning it. Everything starts with a question. Either your customer has a question and you can honor for that, or even starting a business, you're solving a problem through an answer to a really, really good question. Here's a little bit about our product, the Google search results page, which continues to change all the time. They stay on top of those changes to make sure that no one's gaming the system. We'll talk about a few things here. So, sponsored links, paid search. People say, hey, I want to show up on Google. I need to be up on Google tomorrow. Paid search is the easiest way to do it. How do you do it? You're actually paying every time someone click through, clicks through on that. A while ago, having cut my teeth in the paid search world, any idea on what the most expensive keyword was in Say this is about 2002, 2003. Per click when someone clicks on the on the work. Any guesses? Any thoughts? Not all at once, you guys. Weight loss. Wait, Wait, awesome. What do you think they were willing to pay for it? How much per click? Two dollars. Two dollars? Okay. Think loss. 
and go way up. Bankruptcy. Okay, close. Structured settlement was the key word. Any ideas on how much someone was paying every time someone clicked? Twenty bucks. Twenty? Two hundred and fifty dollars? A little high. $105. Per click. Per click. So you're saying, wait a second, Derek. So what if someone just you run a campaign and people just start clicking on my ads like crazy. Are you gonna start billing me? No, here's what happens. There's a whole bunch of what they call fraud rules behind the scenes that make sure that they're valid click-throughs. And that's what these engineers are continuing to do at Google. So deploying the right campaign that's targeted around the right customers is critical. But here's the, here's the awesome thing about paid search. You can determine a budget, determine the keywords, because you have people that are raising their hands saying, hey, here's what I'm looking for. You're putting an ad to capture their attention. They click through it. They go to a landing page. They transact. Then you can go all the way back and say, here's what my return on investment was based on how much I paid for that keyword all the way through. When has that ever happened in marketing? Let's talk about marketing strategy as you're getting ready to start. Some of the earliest marketing that I can think of are cave drawings, right? Probably meant there was a lot of really good meat somewhere. Right? Then you go to Papyra. Then you go to what really changed print. The printing press, right? Where now you have the ability to mass distribute. But again, people are still pushing ads out saying, hey, look how awesome we are. Look how great this is. Now, all of a sudden, we have people that are coming to us and saying, hey, this is what we want. Are we a good fit? So from a marketing perspective, think, and what social media is doing now, and search, I think those cave drawing, <coughs> drawing people, and all those other early advertisers wouldn't get anything for the data that we have now. Next thing, Google Places are what we call local optimization. For a locally focused business, you have to be here. I don't know, actually, how many of you guys have used Yellow Pages in the last year? <laughs> That's what I suspected. Because if we get them, now they're getting much smaller, but we use them either for a doorstop or we typically, now we've got these nice new recycling garbage cans, we recycle them. Because people are going online to find your product or service. They're not opening books anymore. It takes too long. And a lot of times you're on your phone and you're searching and you're going somewhere and you want to interact with that business immediately. So again, making sure that you're taking care of the business, making sure you know who you are from the very beginning is critical. Is this helpful? Going too fast? Okay, just want to make sure here. Organic listings. The reason they're called organic or natural listings, so go through this. This is, these are the acronyms. We're used to acronyms on campus, right? So you get this. Pay-per-click, PPC, maps, SEO, search engine optimization. The reason it's called organic or natural is because it takes time to get there. There's a lot of people who say, oh yeah, I want to be on Google tomorrow. Well, you can with paid search. With maps, it takes a little bit of time. But organically, there's two factors. There's more than two, but I simply I, I break it down really simply. <coughs> Sorry, we're going back to, well, here in high school, there are popularity factors, right? How popular is your website? How many people like you? How many people link to you? Now Google Plus is starting to play an influence into that. How many likes and pluses do you have? Uh, but there's, there's that aspect of popularity. But first and foremost, your site has to be built the right way. Great story of one of our awesome customers. Like, hey, we just finished our website. We're so excited to be working with you guys. They spent a lot of money on it, I won't say. More than $25,000. It was a picture of their practice. This dentist, big, huge, nice picture of their new building that just finished on the main page. The phone number was nowhere to be found. It was below the fold, underneath. Oh, no. <laughs> awesome, but you have to be able to Communicate easily with your customers and make sure that you're easily contactable. So organic, two factors. How your website is built and how popular it is. And how many validations and links and likes and everything else you have coming into it. That's what helps you rank there. As you can see, the search term up here is for Denver Gutters, which just happens to be one of our clients. Hey, can I tell you search works? <laughs> it's a gutter business. <laughs> this guy, really quick. Um, so as part of your overall getting ready to start a company, make sure your marketing strategy is intact. This is a gutter business. Guys have been in business forever. Was getting a few leads a month, three to four a week, 
Now he's getting between 5 and 10 nearly a day just because of surge. And it's a gutter business. A gutter business, of all things. Search works. So here's what we saw. Make sure, as we, you go back here, making sure that you've got the right product, right? Fantastic product, you go to market, the right economics. What does the marketplace look like from which you're going into? And do you have the experience? Do you have the connections? Do you have the capital to make sure that you're ready to succeed in a growing marketplace? You can see when we started right here in 2006, we saw what it was going to become and it's still continuing to grow. That's why we got the little bottle cap right there. So here are a few of our customers. Early on, uh, some of our, again, signing with some of these bigger customers, but again, our core target is the locally focused business and making it easy for them to succeed online. So we work with a lot of these large name brands who had big, huge brands and big budgets, but ultimately where the transaction was created was on a local level. We said, who's helping with local? No one was really deploying these local campaigns even back in 2006. And now we're still doing it for a lot of larger, even larger companies. Uh, we just made the Inc. 500, and I gotta tell you, it was a lot of fun to go out there uh, to Virginia and be part of that conference. Fantastic speakers, a lot of extraordinary companies, and this is something that is a lot of fun. The Utah Valley Entrepreneur Forum, we were, uh, we, I think it was mentioned earlier on, great, what a great place here in Utah to start a business, specifically in Utah County. Uh, we're an authorized technology platform. There's actually just a press release that went out um, where Google has come out multiple times. They actually say, all right, we want to look at your technology and see exactly what you guys do. And we were just, uh, again, awarded a, a, one of their reseller certificates. So here's our mission statement. Again, the easiest way for locally focused businesses to succeed online. The web is complex at the same time also. And so we want to make it easy. The last thing a small business needs is one more thing to do, right? They need to be taking care of their customers, so we remove that from them. Here's my recommendation. If I were sitting in your seats, I would love someone to say, you know what? Find a mentor. And I'm not talking about this guy, okay? <laughs> the, get, the Get Mentoring Program, and there are so many extraordinary people uh, who can provide advice and tips and, and possible things to avoid as you get started. Find someone that you could sit down with, spend time with, and they've been there. And honestly, as I, one of my favorite things to do with, with students through this Get Mentoring program is to sit down with them and open the invitation to all of you. Uh, love to have you. If you want to come out and see the crazy office, take a spin around the office on the bike. Um, but more importantly, uh, love to have you come out. We're in American Fork, so open invitation to all who are here, and including on video as well. I'll provide my contact information at the end. Because there's so many things that can go wrong when you start a business. And making sure that you're connecting and communicating with the people who can you know, really provide that guidance and that leadership for you. One of my favorite mentors is a guy who decided to start an airline. Dave Nealman, started an airline, talk about a commodity business. How are you going to differentiate? You know how he differentiated? Service, and taking care of their customers. So I got to tell you, I fly quite a bit, and uh, the Delta Sky Model, I don't know if that's something you brag about, um, but had an experience where I flew with my family uh, on vacation, and it's right when they just hyped all the baggage fees. We understand because gas and oil prices were going up. And we had to buy tickets for I've got you know, for two of my kids. And so we had the baggage and everything, all the restrictions. They had their cool little, you know, the little princess backpacks they're hauling around. I've got the other bags, but they've got two carry-ons. So I'm coming in to this, and it's probably looking a little bit crazy. Um, but anyway, I've got, it looks like what's a lot of bags. We've got car seats, things like that. And I'd never been treated like that. It was crazy. You know, they're probably like, yeah, you're trying to fit a mattress and a yak in the overhead compartment. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you figure something else out. But we had, you know, the right baggage amounts. But the solution was we were getting off the plane, this person took a picture. It's like, maybe help out a little bit. Why are you taking a picture? You know, sure, I've got a car seat on my back and I've got two bags in my hands, kind of walking off. 
But uh, it was very interesting. I was, let's just say it wasn't a great experience. So I decided to fly JetBlue, which is, was David Nealman's airline company. Really, what's the most important in the day is your customers and making sure you're taking care of the customers. Here's a few blogs that I frequent. I'm in the Warren Soda blog as well, uh, the Entrepreneur blog, Open Forum through American Express. They've got a phenomenal, uh, a lot of great resources, a lot of great people that, that blog there. I really like Seth Godin. He really thinks about things differently, and I like his perspective. Here are a few search sites for those that are interested in search. Search Engine Land, uh, the Google blog is fantastic, and for social specifically, uh, is Mashable. This is really what it's all about. Everyone's got ideas. Ideas are a dime a dozen. But really, it's about going out and executing on it. And for us, an opportunity for people who really want to make a difference. There's people whose lives can be blessed and need to be blessed by new ideas, by thinking differently. If you have an idea, get with a mentor. Put together a good, not only a business plan, but a business model. How does it work? Modeling is the most important. We have been blessed with so much, specifically here and now at this time. How are we going to solve the world's problems? We solve them by getting to work and by doing things and going and making something happen. Here's my contact information. I'd love to connect with any of you. And again, open invitation for any who would like to come out and see our office. No, it's nothing extraordinary, but we'll take good care of you when you walk in. Again, Go, make a difference. Make sure that you're aligned with the right people. Sell it. Be able to share a story, be able to sell it, and be able to scale it. That's really what I'd leave you with. You guys are awesome. Happy Halloween once again. And go Cougars. <laughs>